friends, Frank Smith, IT manager at Atlas MedStaff. Today I just want to quickly cover setting up a home Wi-Fi. Not a long way, I'll probably give you a few tips, uh, some guidance maybe to help you improve performance. But it's really a fairly simple process overall, and let's get started. First of all, right out of the box, Wi-Fi router. Yellow patch cable, it's usually what comes with them, and a power supply. Pretty much these three components are all you'll need to take signal from a cable modem to wireless throughout the house. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go get my cable modem, show you how to hook it up to that, and then we'll go from there. I've got my cable modem over here. Your cable modem might look a little bit different, but basically you're gonna have a cable, black cable comes in and attaches to here, a power cord, much like one of these, and a place to stick our yellow cord. And so essentially what you're gonna be looking for in your house is to hook one end of the yellow cable right into the back of your cable modem. You'll notice that on most models these days, you're gonna have color-coded yellow. On the back of my router, my wireless router, also has a yellow port. So that's why they give it the yellow cable, really to make it very simple. The next thing you want to do is plug power into your router. Plug this in and watch the lights fire up. Your wireless router now is going to go through a few minutes of getting started up cable modems sort of register the hardware address of the device it's connected to. So if you previously had this connected to a computer or some other router, connecting it to this, it may not work until you power this off and then it rediscovers the new piece of hardware connected to it. All right, so we're just about ready to go to the next step. I'm going to, uh, we're gonna cut that film. We're gonna come right back. Well, friends, uh, we, what we've done so far then is to hook up our router, our wireless router, to the cable modem. So really, that's all you need to do for actually hooking it up. What you need to do next is to, you want to connect your various devices to it, your phone, tablet, television, so forth. So there's two, there's several pieces of information actually that you need. But two that come up immediately are you're going to need to know the uh, the what's called the SSID, which is that name for the wireless network that you'll see when you're looking on your computer or on your phone, looking, searching for wireless networks, that's the SSID. I don't know about all manufacturers, but Netgear is actually really good about supplying that information right on the bottom of the router. This one is called Netgear 43, and it gives it the default wireless password. So if you're connecting to that network, I'm going to be looking for Netgear 43, and right here, it supplies the wireless password for me. Now, both of those can be customized, changed, so you can give it to something that's your name and a password that isn't already printed on the back of a device. With that, I want to move over to showing you the admin page and where you can go in there and change your password, change your SSID, and so forth. So we'll be right back with that. In order to access the admin page, you simply just open up a web browser. Most of these have a default uh, address like 192.168.1.1. .1. That will be in this little informational pamphlet that's in your router when you get it. Hit enter. You have to log in. Going to change, put in that password. Okay, and once you change your password, what you want to do is go over to your wireless section, and you're going to see the settings right there. That's the SSID that comes with your router, and then down below over here on the Netgear is the actual password that comes again on the back of the actual router itself so if you want to change that to something more meaningful that you can identify maybe by your name i actually don't use my name 
when I'm setting up my SSID because I just don't like it to be identified as mine. I give it a more unique name. And then I do recommend that you change that password. Um, you can use it, but, and it's usually pretty secure. However, it is on the back of the device. So anybody that has actual physical access to the device is gonna be able to see your password. So that's it. Basic setup, a couple of tips on where to put it for best performance. And maybe you can save yourself a few bucks setting this up. I'm Frank Smith, IT Manager at Atlas MedStaff. Thank you.